Here's a game I've really been looking forward to revisiting, Dragon's Curse for the TurboGrafx-16. I have a lot of nostalgia for this game, despite the fact that I've never played this game when I was younger. One game I did own though, was Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap on the Game Gear. This game is a clone of Wonder Boy 3, but there are a few notable differences which I will get to later. Before I get started I will warn you that I will be showing some later parts of the game and show a bit of the end sequence, but story wise there isn't really anything to spoil, but I'll leave it up to you whether you wish to view this or just leave yourself spoiler free. Anyway, talking of story, let's have a look. It basically just gives you some text at the beginning saying that you just gotta kill some dragons or ghostly goons as it says, nothing too special. And I believe this opening level is a recreation of the last level of Wonder Boy 2, so it's like this game follows on from that. You start off all powered up and you've got the strongest equipment too. But after you defeat that first boss, you get cursed and become a dragon. There was no warning of that in the title of the story. Even though he doesn't fly, I only assume this is a dragon because he breathes fire. But the game calls him Lizard Man, so I guess it's just supposed to be a lizard. That breathes fire. Handy. Anyways, after this mishap, your mission is to find the other dragon bosses and try to remove this pesky curse. Each boss you defeat gives you another curse that transforms you into a different animal, all that have their own unique abilities. Lizard Man, as I said before, he can breathe fire, but he doesn't have a shield, so there's no protection from projectiles. Mouse Man is tiny, and he can walk up certain walls. Piranha Man can swim. Tiger Man does a swipe attack so he can attack things below him. And Hawk Man can fly, but water hurts him. Cause apparently hawks are allergic to water or something, I don't know. And when you're a human at the start, his name is Hugh Man. A for effort there, guys. Later on in the game you can unlock chambers that lets you switch characters freely, so if you need to use a certain ability at a certain area, you can do that. So this game is an adventure game, where you have to use your character's abilities to access certain parts of the world to reach new dungeons and work your way to defeat all the dragons. To help you on your quest, you can find ways of powering yourself up, from collecting items such as arrows which shoot upwards to kill enemies, Fireballs, which does what Blizzard Man does anyways, and potions, which give you health if you lose all your hearts. There are plenty of other items to find, I won't ruin them all for you. But much like in Zelda, you can gain extra hearts to increase your health. But unlike Zelda, you don't get them from bosses. You get them from chests hidden around the world. Enemies drop helpful items, like you do in Zelda. But the most useful thing about enemies is the money as money is pretty much essential for beating this game easily. So you will find yourself farming quite a lot here unfortunately, finding the best places where enemies drop the most money. The reason you'll need money is because there are shops around the world which will sell you swords, shields and armour. What sword you choose affects your attack power, the shield affects your defence and the armour affects your charisma. And why do you need charisma? Well, obviously the pigs in the shop won't sell you items unless you have enough charisma. That makes perfect sense, right? At least for a game where you can breathe fire underwater anyways. Some of these items are essential to get through the game. They aren't just for attacking, I mean one sword is needed to break certain blocks, and one armour is needed to survive in lava. But certain equipment can increase or lower your stats depending on what character you play as, so as you change character you need to play around with what equipment works best for which character. There are also plenty of secrets to be discovered by revisiting old areas with new characters or equipment. Good ways to get more treasure and potions, and speaking of potions, when you die you have a chance to win a potion on the game over screen. That's a nice feature, I wish more games would do things like that. Graphically this game is fantastic. It's still to this day nice to look at, it's nice and colourful, the animations on the characters look amazing, and I've always liked how they added an animation of the doors opening, yet the character disappears before the door opens. I also really like the enemy designs too. 
The clouds wear sunglasses. Who wouldn't like that? I also like how all the characters have a face they make when they're in pain, including yourself. The music in this game is amazing too. Have a listen, this just brings me back to my childhood. So as you can tell, I am very biased towards this game, having been a huge fan of Wonder Boy 3 as a child. I played this game so much I knew it inside out, especially because I played from the beginning each time since there were no saves back then. There was a password system, but I never used that. On a Wednesday night, after I finished Cubs and my brother was at Scouts, I used to use that hour to play Wonder Boy 3 and see how far I can get. Piranha Man was the furthest I managed. So yes, I have huge memories of this game, so what about the changes that are made to Dragon's Curse? Because after all, I am not reviewing Wonder Boy 3, I am reviewing Dragon's Curse. Well, firstly, the colours are a little different in places. The narration has been changed and seems to be aimed at much younger kids than I remember Wonder Boy 3 being. Using words such as beastly brutes, and the narrator has a thing for the hero, telling him at the end that he's a good-looking guy and calling him Casanova for some reason. But the two biggest changes from Wonder Boy 3 is that, whereas in Wonder Boy 3 you had Lion Man, here they've made him Tiger Man, and I have no idea why they made that change. Maybe there's another Lion Man somewhere that has copyright attached to it. So I don't know if there are any problems with Soul Calibur games having a Lizard Man. But the biggest change is that you can now save your game, which isn't really essential because you can beat the game in a few hours if you know it well enough, but for first time players it's a nice addition. So as I have made clear already, I love this game. I really cannot recommend it enough for those who still go on the Wii Virtual Console. This game or Wonder Boy 3 are well worth your time, and I really want Sega to put Wonder Boy 3 on the 3DS Virtual Console. I would very happily buy it again to be able to play it on the go once more.